God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. In these troubling and disturbing times, we need the abiding presence of a loving and powerful God who has promised to protect, defend, and deliver. Let us worship Him in spirit. Let us worship Him in truth as we bow our heads in prayer. He leadeth me, O blessed thought, O words with heavenly comfort fraught. Whate'er I do, where I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. Our Father and our God, we come to you in our lostness. We come to you in our pain, asking you to lead us in the right path. We come bent by our sinfulness and weary with our burdens, but we also become, become believing in the power of your grace and the abundance of your mercy. We come believing that you will hear our cries and that you will pity our groans. We come asking you to dry weeping eyes, regulate troubled minds, and mend broken hearts. We pray for all those who stand in the need of prayer. We pray for families who have experienced the pain of violence and those who are walking through the valley and shadow of death. Give comfort to those who are sad, directions to those who are confused, and peace to all those who are troubled. We remember this day those we have lost to sickness, to war, and to senseless violence. We cherish their memories and we honor those who have sacrificed so much for the freedom we take for granted. Lead us by your mighty hand out of the darkness that lingers over us and allow the sunrise of a better day to dawn upon all your people. Give us that peace that passes all understanding. Save us now for your service and use us for your glory. Give our leaders the courage to take corrective actions and move past narrow political motives. Hear our prayers, O Lord. Hear our prayers, O Lord. Incline thine ear unto us and grant us your peace. We humbly ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the reading of the biblical passage from Joshua chapter 4, beginning at verse 4, that forms the background for today's message. Beginning at verse 4 of chapter 4. Then Joshua called out the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel, out of every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan, and take up ye every man a stone upon his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Ye will answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it passed over the Jordan. And that these stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. I'd like to speak from this subject, the story of the stone the story of the stones. The crossing of 
the Jordan marked the entrance into the promised land. This event begins with a miracle and ends with the building of a monument. Some monuments celebrate military victories, others honor historical events or exceptional people. The stones in the text testify to a miracle. All are stones that tell a story. They are stones that move us to retell the story of our struggles. They challenge us to never forget the things we have survived. They remind us to remember those who helped us succeed and never forget the miraculous things that God has done for us. Memorial Day is a good time to tell the stories of those whose names are engraved in stone. Memorial Day should be a special day defined by reflection more than just recreation. We should focus on fidelity and faithfulness and not just food and fun. It is a day that reminds us that freedom comes with a price. It is a time to recall the stories of dedicated men and women who sacrificed so much to preserve our way of life. The poet John McCree reflected on the sacrifices of those who died during the Great War, World War I. He honored their sacrifice with a poem entitled, In Flanders Fields. He wrote, In Flanders fields the poppies blow, Between the crosses row on row, That mark our place, and in the sky The lark still bravely singing fly, Scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. The last stanza of his poem challenges us to commit ourselves to their righteous cause, the righteous cause of those who are no longer with us. He wrote, take up our quarrel with the flow. To you from falling hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. Though poppies grow in Flanders fields. In the fourth chapter of the book of Joshua, we are told that God stopped the waters of Jordan and allowed the children of Israel to cross over into Canaan. It was a miracle that they made it over. The American experience is still a miracle in the making. We are still in the process of becoming a more perfect union. America is still a miracle in the making. Our journey is not yet complete. In the language of the spiritual, we still have one more river to cross. When the children of Israel's crossing was complete, Joshua was instructed to tell the people to collect stones and build a monument. A representative of each tribe was ordered to select a stone from the midst of the Jordan and it would remind them of their common bond. We need to remember that we are connected to each other. Despite our differences, there is a common bond that binds us together. There is a harmony that should transcend all of our differences, and that harmony is rich and significant. That harmony should allow us to share each other's sorrows and rejoice in each other's success. It gives meaning to our struggles and permits us to honor and appreciate the sacrifices others have made for our success. When we remember those who were willing to pay the ultimate sacrifice, 
we will flourish as a nation. But when we forget to remember that sacrifice and the sacrifices of all those we are indebted to, we will begin to fade as a people. Three things stand out in the biblical text about the stones erected near the Jordan. First, the stones were reminders of the people of where they came from, what they had been through, and the debt they owed to those who died along the way. We would do well to remember the same. In the words of James Weldon Johnson, we have come over a way that with tears has been warded. We stand on the shoulders of giants. We enjoy the blessing for which our ancestors prayed. We are tempted to forget the pain of our past, and too often we dishonor the memory of those who helped to mold us. But in the words of Christ, if we don't remember and honor them, the rocks will cry out and tell their stories. The rocks will tell the stories of the fallen from the hills of the revolution to the sands of Afghanistan. The rocks will cry out for the men of the 54th Massachusetts. The rocks will cry out for the Buffalo soldiers. The rocks will cry out for Dorian Miller. The rocks will cry out for those who gave their lives for the freedom we enjoy. Not only should we remember those who died on the battlefield, we must remember those who died on the home front. Casualties of the undeclared war against injustice and intolerance. Victims of domestic terror. The rocks cry out for the innocent children slaughtered in schoolrooms. The rocks will cry out for the martyrs in the fight for equal justice and the rocks will cry out for the victims of senseless violence. We must remember that the rights we exercise were not given to us. They were purchased with blood. The stories of these heroes and heroines should inspire us to never give up the good fight and never get in, give in to the foes of oppression. Their stories should motivate us to endure hardships as good soldiers of the cross to finish the course and to keep the faith. Secondly, the stones challenges us to teach our children the lessons of the past. In the words of the text, our children will ask in the future, what do these stones mean? The question frames a teaching moment. A moment when we can enlighten a new generation. A moment when we can mold the future. Have we erected stones that will provoke our children to thoughtful reflection? Have we erected stones that will instill spiritual enlightenment? Have we set up stepping stones for the next generation? Or have we placed stumbling blocks in their path? When we ask what these stones mean, we, we need to have an answer. We need to know the stories and we need to be able to share the stories. We need to be able to put names on the stones and connect the stones to the story of our struggles. When Jacob was on the run, he slept on a stone pillar. He named that place Bethel, meaning the house of God. Our children need to know that the house of God is a critical part of our heritage. The house of God is an important part of our story. The house of God is important to us now in the present and it has been in the past and must be in the future. For in the house of God, we can find hope. In the house of God, we can find comfort. In the house of God, we can find strength. In the house of God, we can find a purpose that helps us deal with our pain. When God defeated an enemy coalition, Samuel placed a stone 
between Mizpah and Shed. He named it Ebenezer, meaning here is a place where God helped us. We need to tell the story of how God fought with us. We need to tell the stories of how God fought for us. We need to tell the stories of how God helped us. When Jesus ransomed us from the penalty of sin, he did it on a rocky hill called Calvary. Can you name the stones that causes you to remember just how good God has been? Can you tell the story of his grace and mercy? Can you testify that God has provided, protected, delivered, and saved? And the children ask the question, can you tell them with certainty, this is where God acted on our behalf. Do you have a story that tells of his mercy, his goodness, his power, and his grace? The stones in the text focused on God's ability to provide, protect, and deliver. For 40 years, Israel wandered in the wilderness, but God never failed them. When famine came, he sent manna from heaven. When water ran out, he made bitter water sweet. When deadly serpents invaded the camp, he provided a cure. When they needed meat, he flew quails into the camp. For 40 years, God clothed them, guided them, and protected them. The stones underscored the fact that God could always be trusted. Finally, the story of the stones reminds us to acknowledge the power of God and never doubt his promises. The story of the stones is a story of the faithfulness of God. There are stories that need to be retold. There are stories that need to be remembered. There are stories that are worth retelling because they recall events and individuals that made a difference. We retell the story of Valley Forge because the perseverance of of those patriots made the difference in the American Revolution. We retell the story of Gettysburg because that battle, according to Lincoln, affirmed that government by the people and for the people should not perish from the earth. We retell the story of D-Day because it led to the liberation of Europe and the defeat of Nazism. Some stories are worth retelling. We must continue to tell the story, the story of those heroes and heroines whose action made a difference. We must continue to tell the story of the Buffalo Soldiers, the Doughboys, the GIs of the Pacific, the soldiers of Vietnam, the Big Red One. We must also tell the stories of the Red Tails, the Freedom Riders, and the Martyrs of the movement. But more than anything else, we need to tell the story of Jesus. Tell of his birth in Bethlehem, his ministry in Galilee, his agony in Gethsemane, and his death on Calvary. His blood made the difference at Calvary. I thank God for that blood that came streaming down for me. It was the blood that made the difference at Calvary. For in Christ the wretched are redeemed through him, the rejected are reclaimed, and by him the broken are blessed. And today, despite all the disruption, all the distress, all the violence, all the things that confront us and confound us, today Christ can still be trusted. As Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. He is worthy of worship. Remember that he is the stone that the builders rejected. 
Remember that he is the stone hewed out of the mountain by an unseen hand. <clears throat> Remember that he died for our sins. But early Sunday morning, God raised him from the dead. His promises are sure. His power is awesome. His mercy is marvelous. His love is unconditional. He cannot be hindered and his work cannot be undone. Embrace him as your savior in these troubling times. And remember that even when we walk through the valley and shadow of death, he will be with us. Trust him to be your guide. His story still inspires. His atonement still works. His blood still makes the difference. And if we believe in him, his Holy Spirit will empower us to make a difference. Because as followers of Christ, we have been called not only to worship him, but to work for him and to make a difference in our communities, in our state, and in our nation. And the best way we can remember those who have fallen by the way is to act according to the dictates and precepts of our Christ, who left his royal robe in glory, hung it on the doorpost of time, came through 42 long generations to show us the way back to God and shed his own precious blood on Golgotha's rugged brow. Yes, it was his blood that made a difference. May his grace, his mercy, and his peace, the love of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit Rest, rule, abide, and attend each of you now and in the days to come. Amen and amen. Be blessed and remember the fall.